Hey, this is Richard Patrick from Filter, and you're watching Loudwire. I'm sitting with Richard Patrick of Filter. Honored to be here. Wikipedia, fact or fiction time. Good. So, let's get to the truth. Hopefully. Went through your Wikipedia page, I do want to say, I do, Wikipedia is a very good uh, website. They do everything with donations. They're not out to make money. They're just out to offer information. So I do like this website. Let's make sure everything's up to date. Although they don't consider you to be a good source on yourself. Well, that's true. I've tried to change things. <laughs> like, no, I was born in Needham. You know, like... And oh, okay, and they're like, it, well, I think that's what it says. Needham, ne Needham, Mass. That's Needham, right. Mass. Okay, right. so, they so that's allowed one. me to fact check my own thing. You landed a gig as a touring guitarist in Nine Inch Nails after a chance meeting with Trent Reznor in a Cleveland music store. Yes, uh, Pi yes. keyboards and audio. Uh, I actually, he was in a band that I was opening up for called the Exotic Birds. And uh, I was in this really bad band called The Act. <laughs> well, they were both kind of bad. I don't know what to say. Did he have like any sort of musical reputation at that time? It was, you know, he was in this band, The Exotic Birds, and they were as poppy and as goofy as you could imagine with a name like that. And he just, you know, he was like, man, I want to do my own thing. Okay. And he disappeared, like from the scene for like a year and he came out of it with this amazingly horrible record contract with TBT but in Cleveland it was like wait a minute you got a record oh, deal? Of course. Like you know we were like what and like so he told me he's like you should he's like I hear you're not doing the act anymore I said yeah and he goes he goes you should well, let's get together and I'll play some of the new Nine Inch Nails and I was like alright cool. And that's a pretty hate machine. Yeah. Take a picture and here we go. Oh boy. The song is about you getting drunk in an airplane, taking off all your clothes, and alarming other passengers. Word. Yeah. Word. I like to get fucked up. <laughs> I like to get crazy, you know? On planes. Yeah. Really? That so, actually, it was, a, it was a long binge. It was a long, brutal binge. And I needed to go to Los Angeles to accept my platinum record. Ah. Uh. So the triumphant and flight that was. So uh, I was coming down, and are you? Mm. Are my managers telling me not to say anything? Uh oh, I'm just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to them. No, but I, I, it's a. I was open. Listen, I'm open about my alcoholism because I think other alcoholics can relate somehow and find a way to sobriety as well. Because, you know, uh, I was a loon, and I have some crazy stories. Were you in first class? Yep. And I nice. think that's the only reason why Brian was there, but he had woken up after everything, <laughs> and he was like looking at me, and I had, you know, I had a blanket on, <laughs> on me, and um, the stewardess is like, "You okay? You back with us?" And I was like, uh, "I think so." And the guy next to me was like that, and uh, I was like, "Well, I just want to apologize to everybody," and uh, oh. I. I uh, I will be seeking treatment as soon as we land. And they were like, okay. And then maybe four years later, I went in and, and dealt with you it. You didn't say when exactly. I didn't, I didn't give it. But yeah, that was the first time I had an issue on a plane, and there was more. So. Oof. Any, anything, was it worse than that? Or was well, that I was one? smoking on a plane and... Cigarettes? Yeah. Oh, did you get a big fine? No. I... Um, they, uh, well, here's the truth. I was, I, I knew I was in big trouble because you kind of wake up during this stuff mm -hmm. and you kind of come to your senses and they were like, we're calling SWAT. SWAT was coming on the plane and because they landed and this guy's crazy and he doesn't know what he's doing. And yeah. So there I am. I'm like, I went into What's Eating Gilbert Grape, and I did the Leonardo DiCaprio imitation of uh, his character from What's Eating Gilbert Grape, the Johnny Depp um, movie. Yes. And I just went, I can't believe I'm on the plane. I, why do you give beat up? And I did that, and <laughs> that led me to the psych ward, which is really? awesome. True story. The nurse that did my intake at the psych ward's like, look, I know who you are. I 
just want to say I love Filter. Take a picture is my favorite song. I'm going to get you out of here, but like, I want to go on a date with you. Really? And I said, oh, I will date you for a year straight. What happened there? Nothing happened. I mean, she got me out. Did you go on a date? She, I, uh, no. She was like, you know what? You're too much of a drinker. <laughs> and I'm like, well, she didn't do that. But she was like, you know, uh, in the facts or whatever we did back then. In a phone conversation, she's like, you're a bit crazy. I thought it was a one-time thing with you, but I think you're a little drunk all the time. Uh, the song Miss Blue. I spit it, too. I, you know, you fuck yeah. That? Lead singer spit. Whatever. So what? Sell it. Spitting out lyrics, yeah. That just happened. Not really. You're sober? Yeah. Actually, yeah. I, I actually... I actually think it's good to just have fun, little body. Let's have some fun in here. Let's have some, loosen up, loosen up. All right, You're, you loose? Yep. Okay, this back to fact or fiction. Miss Blue is That's said- That's my Jim Carrey, by the way. <laughs> said to have been about Smashing Pumpkins bassist Darcy Redskin. Yes, now that time's passed and everything, Darcy and I had a just a incredible, um, amazing, passionate relationship when she was married, and oh, that was another part. My principles had gone downhill, and I, but she said it was an open marriage, and you know, and not I, your I, fault. I, I know that the other, the her husband was like, oh, I, you know, that's how she is. So oh, so it's not. I, it wasn't. I didn't feel horrible it's not about that shady it. Yeah, then, he, you know, she, right? she, he knew, and yeah. But Darcy Retsky Brown was like a huge. She was like. The one that got away, but at the same time, she was another one that was like, dude, the drinking. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Really? Like her too. Yeah. Her? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. She said that. Well, she, listen, when I was with her, there was a very serious professional musician that was like doing a lot, like very committed towards uh, like her, uh, you know, her job and her role in the Smashing oh, Pumpkins. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. and they were playing stadiums. Yep, and it was it was like she she had it everything figured out, and she was like, she's like the problem is Rich is I know how to drink. I drink one drink a night. You're going crazy, and at some point, I guess she the gloves went off and she went into an experimental phase, um, mm. I, from what I gather. But she was uh, the 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 girl that I really really loved before I met my wife, and then. Um, then that happened. But yeah, she broke up with me. She was like, you're kind of crazy. I had a big crush on her when I was oh young. Oh my God, who didn't? Really? Seriously? I was, I was honored that, like, she's like, hey, you're kind of, she's like, I'm attracted to someone in your band. And I'm like, oh really? Wow, there's a lot of good looking dudes in the band. I guess, <laughs> I guess Brian or Gino or one of those guys. And she's like, no, it's you. I'm like, what? That's one of those moments where you just go like, woman, you crazy. <laughs> But then she, you know, it was awesome. I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, but you know, time flies. We're still friends. You yeah. know, things are good. She has a beautiful, like, horse stable in Michigan and like, loves winter and, you know, and loves riding awesome. and make, you know, the horses. She has this big horse farm. She's happy so as That's well. like a breakfast club moment. Darcy, awesome. Dun, dun, eh, 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 eh. The song Cap. You remember it. Yeah. The song Captain Bly. Yes. Was written about Trent Reznor's notori uh, notoriously antisocial habits. No. It's Fiction about again. The, it's about uh, Captain Bly is about how the pirates mutinied and took over <laughs> the bounty. Okay. A little different. You see, Captain Bly was an actual person. Yes. Was a captain. Says uh, Vice Admiral William Bly of the HMS Bounty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was about kind of the, 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 the pirates taking off. It was my thing. I had left Nine Inch Nails. He wrote a song called Piggy. Oh, yeah, of course. He wrote a song called Piggy. My nickname in Nine Inch Nails from 1989 to 93 when I left was Piggy. And he wrote huh. songs towards people. Like, he wrote songs at people. Mm. And, you know, uh, I quit the band a week later. Uh, he was writing That's uh, when this he song, wrote. Piggy, and Brian Leesgang was working on that oh. record. And Brian goes, hey, dude, Trent's writing this song called Piggy, and it's not very flattering. And I was like, 
uh, why? He's like, he's pissed, dude. Hmm. He fucking pissed him off. And I went, I wanted to sing and do my thing. It's like, didn't I leave because I'm in a band with you now? Well, no, he was, he had to get fired from Nine Inch Nails before I could pick him up. Oh, okay. That that's actually says, that's actually Wikipedia said that was wrong. It said you left Nine Inch Nails to start a project with Brian. No. That's, okay, again, there's some more they fiction. they kind of messed it up. But, so, he wrote the song Piggy, and I was like, well, shit. Two can play at this game, man. Drug Boy was written about past antics while touring with Nine Inch Nails involving drugs and staying off out all of, night. No, off of the tour, I was in Nine Inch Nails, but I would go, oh my God, we would climb bridges that in Cleveland. <laughs> Lost there, Boys. There, we would climb bridges and you'd, you'd get underneath this bridge and it wasn't a drawbridge like this, it was a drawbridge that went underneath. Oh like, yeah, yeah. So it went up like that. So we would climb underneath and ride these things as lake liner uh, ore ships would come in <laughs> and do a Cleveland summer night and you'd see these massive ships and we were wasted. We were so high on so many drugs and we would watch this stuff and then we would get underneath the transportation bridge and climb up the scaffolding and get underneath that. Now underneath that is a service road with all of these pipes and fiber optics and all this stuff and we would get underneath that and just wander it. And I actually shot a video up there called Cuticles about a guy that's like eating his cuticle, he's like crazy. Oh. Insane. I shot like a little, it wasn't even a video, it was more like a, a little short film. <laughs> and um, it was wild. And uh, yeah, we did all kinds of stuff on acid. It was, it was uh, kids, like I told you, your daddy used to be crazy. <laughs> Don't make me go Southern. Don't make me go Southern. That's what I tell my kids. Don't make me go Southern. Don't make me go Southern, I'll go Southern. And my kids are like, I don't know, uh, uh, Southern, let's not do it. Yeah, All Ridley right. and Sloan, you know what I'm talking about. When you're watching this when you're teenagers, yes, this is, you know, come on, you know, it's dad. But I had a big problem, so don't start, please. Dad has a past. Dad has a past. I'm owning it. What can you do? What can you do? All right, last one for you. Uh, the sun comes out tonight. The album's yeah. lyrics are based on feeling of betrayal and anger in your personal life, including an incident where your wife was almost run off the road by someone throwing trash at her car over a bumper sticker. Yeah. That happened. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anger. There's all this anger in the country. Uh, we had a bumper sticker that said, ban assault weapons. Yeah, I, I can't possibly in, see how that would trigger in, anger from people. In Southern California. Okay, that, now that's... A I, big white truck with horns on it <laughs> and a gun rack or an empty gun rack. The guy literally Thankfully. was throwing water on my wife with my children on their way to kindergarten at 9 a.m. in the morning <laughs> for a bumper sticker. Oh. So I'm not allowed to have a bumper sticker <sighs> because some crazy redneck gun enthusiast. By the way, I like guns. I like the 357 Magnum. We were talking about I, that. I enjoy, I enjoy going to the shooting range and firing off those yeah. things. Dude, chill! We're not coming after your guns. It's just a bumper sticker, man. They're coming after our bumper stickers. They're coming after our bumper stickers, and they're willing to hurt my wife and two kids. Yeah. So, you know, that's real. <laughs> that's insane. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad everything worked out. Yeah. You know. I had to put a NASA sticker instead. That's awesome. Because I'm like, well, mother. fuck it. If I can't say the truth, I'll just put, promote something that's awesome that is really an achievement. Second Amendment isn't an achievement. NASA is a fucking achievement. Hubble. I dig space. Fucking International Space Station. Yeah, I'm into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's so if you something see... to promote. So I just went opposites. I went, okay, rednecks don't like this. Let's see if they understand what NASA is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm Southern, 
So technically, I'm a redneck, so I'm allowed to do all this talking. There you go. Thank you very much, hey, Richard thanks. Patrick, everybody. I appreciate it. Have fun, kids.